in there. And the problem is the whole connector is twisting. That's not favorable. favorable. Uh. Well, this is awful. Um, fuck it. I'll just grab it tightly with pliers from the outside. Yep, that'll work. Maybe not how God intended these to be used, but... Wait, I got distracted. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right, and then these switches are going to be used for line and neutral connect, so that you don't have to jumper across these. You can just switch these on, and then current will flow through the box as it, you know one would expect under normal circumstances. Oh, no, that's fine, actually. I was just thinking maybe I shouldn't use lighted switches here uh, for the reason that if I'm trying to measure the current drawn by the circuit, I don't want to measure the uh, current drawn by the neon indicators in here. But, uh, yeah, it's not going to be a better way to wire that, huh? I could either use non-lighted ones or just not hook up a neutral to this. No, you know what, if they're not going to light up, they sh I shouldn't use light-up connectors because that'll just be confusing. Yeah, a little redesign. Fortunately, I have exactly the same size of switch, just without lights. Non-illuminated, and I happen to have them right next to me, actually, which is more convenient than having to go over there. I mean, I like having indicators whenever possible, but... And I'm orienting the switch like this, which... I mean, in theory, you know, you'd think on is up and off is down, which is kind of appropriate, but this isn't really an on-off switch in the traditional sense. I mean, it is, but, like, it's more like a bypass switch or a lack of bypass switch. So I'm, I'm going to aim it this way, more like, you know, now put current that way when you flip the switch. I don't know, maybe... Oh, this has a key to keep it oriented, but eh, I think I can get away with just shoving it in there. Or not. Ah, yeah, fuck. Okay. Yeah, it's got a little uh, key to keep it from rotating, which would require me just to cut a little slot in there, which I actually didn't do for this switch. Um, Maybe I should not be... No, you know what? I'm going to be lazy. And just cut off the key. If this was a box like that I was making for someone else or someone else was going to be using, I'd be much more careful about shit like that. Because I, I wouldn't want them to get caught out by this switch rotating and then, you know, a connection underneath coming loose. But, oh, it was not the key that was preventing it from going in. Go in There we go. Hmm. Wonderful. Add a shot again. Okay, this one, yeah, the key doesn't... The key is definitely what's keeping this one from going in. Again, this, some of this, I'll grant, is laziness, like... I don't want to say I'm rushing, but I kind of want to get to my next project because it seems like it's going to be more fun. I'm planning on making an Arduino-controlled resistor box. Again, just for fun's, fun.
clumsy. It's not like I really need a resistor box. But uh, it's going to be more complicated than it needs to be. But I'll get to use some logic ICs and some other fun stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Is this supposed to be mounted flush or is that nut supposed to be underneath? Mounted flush. Now, the reason I'm using this gigantic weird switch as opposed to just another one of these switches is because I need a double pole switch. Because basically I need to cut off the power to both of these LED indicators at the same time. I guess I could use that. Whatever. You know what? Screw it. And actually, can I? Oh, I can orient the switch that way. But then I'm going to... Then it's kind of counter to the way these switches are wired. So I'm thinking I'll put it this way. Again, to indicate, like, on to the, like, put power to those LEDs off, take it away. I know it's not standard, but a, I'm not, like, a standard type of guy at all times. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. There's anything to keep this from rotating. I guess just screw it down really fucking tightly. You know what, I'm going to put this washer on the bottom, which maybe is where it's supposed to go. To help, like, yeah, do, 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 and oh, you know what? I said, and I showed at the beginning of this video that I'm going to put this discussion over that. But I just realized now I run the, I have the same problem I had previously, which is that I'm covering LED disable. But I plan on putting that there to cover up the hack job I did drilling this out. So you know what? Let's um just cut that a little more pleasantly or at least push it in yeah let me cut around that edge more pleasantly my exacto knife is already out I've learned the hard way and I still do it not to leave exacto knives lying around in a messy bench because you're going to go grab for something and grab an exacto knife blade and these cut real easily I wish I remember the story. When I was in summer camp, um, the camp had a rocketry program, like model rockets. And we had X-Acto knives for cutting out model rocket parts, like the balsa wood for the fins. And I don't remember how it happened, but I accidentally cut some kid's arm, like, really deep. Like, it was not like I was fighting with him or messing around. It was like, I think I had it in my hand. I went to go hand him something else. And however it happened, like, as I was reaching towards him, the knife scraped down his whole arm. And, like, without much force, without me even realizing I was cutting him, it just, like, cut real deep into his, into his forearm. And he bled a lot, and I thought I was going to get kicked out of camp permanently. But, uh, fortunately, him and I guess his parents, too, were very understanding. So, this is keyed. So, that a ways is off. So, we want to aim it that a ways. Yeah, so I'm just going to have to... Oh, well, now I need that washer back that I was going to use underneath it. So we'll just use this little washer, which still kind of obscures the dot in the eye of disable, but you know what? That's fine with me. Oh, no. Haha, <laughs> I forgot. The switch comes with this cool um, rubberized cap. Which, actually, now that I think about it, green probably isn't the right choice because that makes you think it has something to do with the grounding circuit. Um, and obviously the grounding circuit's going to be contiguous throughout the whole thing. I don't want to, again, for safety reasons, have a way to drop the ground. So instead, I think I'll just replace that with a... I got a whole bunch of these from Amazon. It came in a package of three, I guess. I thought it came with four. It's got four switch tops, though. And I think these are meant... Like, there's a little O-ring under there. These are meant to be used on, like, boats and RVs and stuff where it might get wet. I guess in cars too. I think that's the general gist, even though I guess more RVs and boats, because this is um, rated for 120 volts AC. Actually, I think it's rated for 250 volts AC. And this is just a little tricky to get on, because if the switch was directly in the middle position, it would be nice and easy. But the switch won't stay in the middle position. So getting that 
nut lined up with the rubber pulling back against it is kind of tricky. There we go. Yay. It's like getting a condom on a fucking rhinoceros. I don't know what that means. Okay. Cool. And just keep that lined up as best as possible and tighten it down the rest of the way. At least these pliers are nicely suited for that. And try not to mar the front of this box with the pliers as I do this. And these are well-made switches. These, I think these were moderately expensive. Might have been like 10 bucks for the 3-pack. Um, well, don't quote me on that because I got these sort of on a whim because I thought they looked cool. Wasn't even necessarily for this project, but yeah, whatever. Like I said, it's because I need a double pole switch. I'd rather have used a switch that looks like this just for uh, symmetry, for to, you know. But there we go. That's uh, other than this hole that I accidentally cut in there. Uh, this is what it's supposed to look like, and that is excellent. Here, I just want to get the original diagram. And I made a couple of minor changes, like this original diagram did not have the LED disable on it. Oh, excuse me, I'm burping. But um, yeah, obviously with the giant circles, I think it looked a lot stupider. Um, I rather like it with just the lines indicating basically where the circuit paths are. The camera really fucking dim. Oh, wait, let me just turn up the gain here a little. Just a little though, Other, obviously, otherwise it's going to like blow out the whites completely. <sighs> oh, that's already doing the best part of blowing it out. But you know what, nothing's really that white. That is like some extreme white white, so I'm just kind of do that by eye. I'm fine with it, whatever. Alright, cool, so the current step is to wire all this the fuck up. Which I don't know that I'll finish because it's um, already 1.40 in the morning here. I always do this stuff late at night after my wife goes to bed. Um, not because not of any weird reason, it's just our house is kind of open. And if she's watching TV upstairs and I'm talking down here, like we hear each other. And more importantly, the mic would pick up the television and pick up her stomping around upstairs. And plus this way... With everyone asleep, I know I'm not going to get disturbed while I'm working on this. Obviously, I'm going to have to cut out these screw holes, but that's fine. And you can see I big up myself. I put my uh, URL there, which just narrowly avoided the screw hole because I didn't take that into account at all. Oh, ass. I left a piece of scotch tape on here from when I was aligning the... Um, template for drilling and now this tape is underneath the label that I put on top but only barely so I can actually sort of squeeze it out of there oh yeah okay that, that's good enough sweet so as I said I'm going to do this as modular modularly as possible and I got plenty o connectors. Oh shit, I'm in camera view, that's why. Yeah, plenty o connectors of hopefully the appropriate sizes. Now these are like the standard 3M size of actual connector. Um, I don't know how many of these insulated ones I have actually. So these are a little too small. That fits on quite snugly, though. Hmm. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Pretty sure we need, like, all of these over the course of this project. The thing that sucks about these multi-packs is, like, once I use all of these insulated ones, especially just all the insulated blue ones for that particular size of wire, um, 
when I need more of these, I either have to order a few of these, which is going to cost a lot, possibly almost as much as an entire package of um, the variety of connectors. So you end up with a shit ton of connectors that you hardly ever use just to get a few connectors that you use a lot. And I've had that experience with a lot of other things and stuff. So, anywho. And, by the way, for quote-unquote bus bars inside, I'm just going to use these Wago-style connectors. Initially, I was going to, like, splice and solder everything properly, but like I said, I ultimately decided I want to be able to reconfigure this whole shebang. So, uh, obviously, these are very easy to reconfigure because you just open the clip and it releases the wire. Open it up again, shove one in there, push it down, and it locks the wire in place and has continuity between all these pins. And these are Wago knockoffs from eBay. So not something I would use um, in a permanent installation in the wall or in the ceiling or any you know anything that's going to be on all the time, but for a box that I'm going to be monitoring personally whenever it's turned on, I, I think it's fine. All right, now here's the part where I got to connect to the upstream box, but I'm not. I don't want to drill the hole yet, so I'm not going to start with this. I'm just going to leave terminals open for that. Now the problem is if I want to tap the LED off of that wiring, that really has to go into a Wago connector, then split off this LED, and then split off from the to the uh, breaker, which seems like kind of a waste of a Wago connector. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So yeah, I'll have live and neutral come into a triple banger style Wago. Um, I need another one of those though. And I'm going to continue the, not tradition, I'm going to continue the standard that I've now set of using yellow and blue for neutral and live respectively on the wiring on the inside of the box. Just that it all matches up quite nicely. Not strictly speaking necessary, but it would get confusing otherwise. Unfortunately, all of these connectors are going to be blue, so that'll just perhaps add to the confusion. Okay, so I gotta wire up that LED, which means I gotta start up the soldering iron. I might as well put tails on all three of these LEDs all at once, so I don't have to keep the soldering iron out the whole time. Bada bing, bada boom. Turn that on, bring this over here. I'm going to have to bend those out a little bit to actually get to them. I mean, seriously, like those contacts are tiny and directly up against that insulator that's going to sit between them. Um, also, I should probably sleeve that with heat shrink just because those are going to be so close to each other. Hmm. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. So let me just try to, like I said, bend those out a little. It might be better off just using a screwdriver. Yeah, 100% better off using a screwdriver. Obviously, this place is a mess. I mean, not just this bench, as I call it, but the entire basement. I'm not what you call, like, a neat freak. Yeah. In fact, that's like an understatement. I'm definitely underselling that. I'm more like what you call a mess freak, I guess. Oh, God. Okay. I know you're kind of zoomed out there, but all I'm doing is just bending out these little connector tabs with a screwdriver that's actually a blade that's too thick for that purpose on that one. Oh, don't make me get a smaller screwdriver. Or I guess I could use a knife to just... Ah, there we go. Well, you missed it. Eh, shit. There we go. 
And I mean, that's gonna that's gonna need some very thin wire to get in there. Fortunately, for that exact purpose, I already cut some thin wire off uh, some spools I have nearby. And I'm gonna zoom out for this just to keep everything in shot. I hope you're not uh, gonna miss too much here by not being close, but really all I'm doing is going to strip these wires, solder them onto there, leaving a tail. And a decent length tail, because I can always cut it down. Always better too long than too short. And I really do not need much. Wow, this is uh, this some elastic insulation. And these holes are extremely small. I don't even know if I can get all these strands through there. Well, fuck. Even this thin gauge wire is too thick. Let me get even thinner gauge wire. Which now, you, I'll note, this whole apparatus is breakered at 3 amps. So at most, 3 amps of current is going to flow through these wires. And these would probably do fine at 3 amps over these very short runs. The wire I'm about to use, not so much. I mean, I could just lose some strands out of that wire if I wanted to be super fucking careful about it. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let me be super careful about it, because I can just cut off a few strands from this thicker wire, and where the solder meets it all, it'll beef it up. And it's better than using actually thinner gauge wire because the rest of this wire is I mean I guess I could have also just split the conductors out or split the strands out and left some of the outside but I'm not even pretending this because I don't want it to thicken up I want it to be a little flexible to get through that hole in the first place although oh come on it almost fit with all the strands I cut half the strands off and now it doesn't want to go at all there we are this is some real finicky shit. Next time I'm getting like huge ass indicator lamps. With big bodies. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of solder. Wow, that tip is dirty. Hang on. That was real dirty. Crusty. Yeah, much better. Come on, let me just bridge a little on there. There we go. Nice. Now I just got to remember to put heat shrink on it before I connect the other end of these wires to anything else. Yeah, okay, so that'll work. Now I can just go through and bang out the rest. And I'm going to zoom back out so that I don't keep going out of shot like I just did. And take off a little less than half the strands. How about that? This camera also like too... D no, I calibrated it. I don't like the gamma, I think, is the problem. Sorry, just suffering some self-doubt about my camera settings. Like, I mean, it's, it's too dark, right? It is. It's too dark. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, a lot better. Of course, now when I go to edit this, it's not going to be contiguous. But whatever. Continuity is for pussies. Should be wiring these in from the top.
Man, that's a tight fit. And I know if I tin this. No, fuck me. And I know if I tin this, it is definitely not going to fit because it'll thicken it up just that ever so slight amount. Come on, get in there with all your strands. Okay. And just sort of keep that away from there. Okay. Oh, the solder's really like meanly wicks up his wires. I'm gonna bend them back up. Actually, you know what? They're fine, like splayed out like that, I guess. As long as I can get heat shrink tubing like right up to the very edge. Yeah, I'll probably bend them up before I do that. Get about half that. Yeah, man, the insulation on this is just gummy. Shit. All right, and just get a couple of strands out of the way. Cut them off. Yeah, this is the better move, because this way, this entire wire is, will be rated appropriately. It's just this very end theoretically won't be, but by the time the solder blobs on there and wicks up into the middle of the uh, of the conductor, it's going to be just fine as far as rating goes. And this is really only a vent of a short circuit. I mean, it's like there was something going catastrophically wrong with the LED that set a shot. Because um, obviously, I mean, it's an LED. It should never draw enough current to actually cause a problem in of itself, but... Fault conditions are fault conditions. And you never really know what'll bring them about. You can guess, but stuff surprises you at every turn. And it's not just with electricity and electronics, it's with, uh, you know, pretty much everything. Okay. Yeah, this camera calibration looks a lot better. Man, I'm pissed at myself that it made it look shitty the whole first half of this stream. What is it, 2 o'clock? How long have I been at this? An hour and a half. Holy shit. Time flies. I know I'm not probably the fat. I'm not the fastest person, necessarily. Or even the best kind of talking guy. Yeah. But... I enjoy it. Kills time. It's better than watching TV because at least at the end of this, I have something to show for it. Which, if you're watching this, not to say that you shouldn't be watching this. There's anything wrong with watching TV or the internet equivalent of TV. I mean, I watch a shit ton of YouTube. It's just, you know, occasionally. I think I gotta do some kind of project just to keep myself from going crazy. Plus, I get inspired by other YouTubers. Like, I saw, I look up his channel, his name's Ben Eater. Like, Eater, like, like, like he's a guy who eats things. I don't know, I'm not making fun of him, that's just what his name is spelled like. Ben, E, -E Ben, B-E-N, E-A-T-E-R. Ben Eater. Um, he got some internet fame for making a fully functional breadboard computer using just logic ICs and like no CPU or microcontroller or anything. And it was like a 14 hour series of videos. Very well done though, I watched all of them. And like, I, I was never much of an electronics guy. You know, I'm more of a computer guy. Um, and like a general, like electricity and hooking stuff up together type of guy. Like I love video and audio hardware because there's just a lot of shit to wire up. 
I guess I'm really more of a wires guy than anything. But anyway, uh, point being, I was never comfortable with electronics. Like, I have embarrassingly never used an integrated circuit, at least not really that I can remember. Maybe in high school when we had electronics class. But uh, this guy put together an entire computer on a breadboard, sort of, shall we say, from scratch. I mean, he didn't use, he didn't go down to the point of using actual transistors, because that would have required a breadboard probably bigger than his house. But, um, like I said, just using logic ICs. Um, latches and registers and a couple of EEPROM chips. Very interesting. Anyway, um, so that kind of got me inspired to do some electronic stuff. And just from watching all of that, I gained more comprehension of electronics. Practical electronics, not necessarily electronics theory, because it... I mean, he actually was pretty deep on theory. So you know what, let me amend that. On theory, yes. Um, the guy's an excellent teacher. I don't know what he does in real life. He should be a teacher or professor or something. But, uh, yeah, I learned more from him than I have from any other source in my entire life when it comes to basic electronics, particularly in integrated circuits and shit like that. I'm never comfortable with integrated circuits because you know what it is? Like, coming from the computer world, if you put in a CPU the wrong way around, or a, or a memory, you know, back, uh, I actually installed memory in a computer for the first time when it uses, when it used uh, dip chips, like, like actual socketed RAM ICs instead of memory modules. Um, and, you know, just coming from that sort of background, if you put a component in the wrong way, and it was a lot easier to do back in the day than it is now, um, you would just fry that component, possibly fry your motherboard too, possibly fry other things connected to your motherboard. In other words, you could just really fuck up your whole day by misusing some kind of IC or some kind of computer chip. And so I always had kind of a fear of fucking around with ICs. And like, they always ha held a certain mystique to me, which, you know, I guess is silly, but... Um, I'm not, not to say like I was scared of them, but I was scared of fucking them up. And like, Radio Shack always, you know, carried some ICs in the store, but not a whole hell of a lot. And maybe they were more expensive when I was a kid, or I was a kid, so I just had less money. So I never completely got into, you know, ex experimenting with them. Um, but I figured now is about time. I've played around with Arduinos and like other, you know, basic electronic circuits before, but my next project, I'm actually going to use some logic gates and registers and um, shift registers and, and stuff like that. Should be fun. But anyway, so yeah, YouTube, very inspirational. If you watch the right sorts of YouTube, I mean, there's a lot of trash on YouTube also. I mean, I don't generally follow, like, the drama channels or any stuff like that. I'm only aware they exist from channels I follow that either make fun of them or just briefly discuss them before moving on with their lives. Again, I'm not, don't take that as me, like, pooping on you if you like the drama stuff, I mean, everyone has their guilty pleasures. You know, like, I'm not, uh, I'm not quick to judge people. I mean, my wife watches a lot of TV that I think is awful, but I, you know, still respect her, so. But hey, I could cause YouTube drama by making someone feel bad or think that I'm judging them for watching YouTube drama. That'd be funny. Ironic. Don't you think? I'll even use the appropriate color of heat shrink tubing. I had to go a fairly large tube size to try to get it over the soldered connections down here, which are a little bulky because I bent the connector out of the way and some some strands didn't really make it through all the way. Um, oh, that's completely out of shot. So, 
it's not going to be a great fit, but as long as I get it fairly close, like obviously this isn't going to go bending around to that side, but yeah, this is just sort of like belt and suspenders type shit. But yeah, YouTube is a marvelous place. It's getting to be that a lot of content on YouTube is, I mean, I hesitate to say better than like stuff from major market media, but in many ways it is. Like, I, I've, I would never have seen, I don't think, on TV, a man as assembling a breadboard computer in his house for 14 hours. You know, like no television station is going to ever air that. But it's incredibly interesting and incredibly worth watching if that's your thing. That's, yeah, that's fine. So it's really just great how customized entertainment is. You know, like, I've met people in the past who have said, like, oh, I don't own a television. Television's not for me. I'd rather read a book or watch a play. You know, that kind of shit. It's like, no, you idiot. Like, it's a medium. You know? Like, any medium. Like, there's shitty paintings. There's shitty music. Like, by anyone's standards. You know, anyone can go out there and find a shitty artist, a musical artist, a shitty artist who paints a shitty ballerina you know by your standards because it's all in the eye of the beholder right so every all media has shittiness you know there's plenty of shitty tv out there but there's plenty of excellent tv out there as well and by the same token there's plenty of shitty youtube out there and plenty of really high quality interesting youtube and you know of course like i said it's only eye of the beholder it's everyone's has their own standards but I think, like, in the grand scheme of things, I'm sorry it's getting noisy, I'm over by the air conditioners. Um, you know, a man assembling, or a woman for that matter, just having a man in this case, I'm not trying to be sexist about it. Um, a man assembling a breadboard computer in his house, I don't think anyone would say that's bad. Like, you know, it might not be in your scope of interest, so you might find it boring. But no one's going to be like, oh, that's, I'm using a, just gonna warm up my heat gun for the uh, heat shrink tubing. You know, no one's gonna say, "Oh, won't someone please think of the children?" When uh, it comes to shit like that, like it's uh, it's wholesome, in other words, but it's also very specific and something that really could only be on YouTube and not on national television or even, well, I guess even local television. Even public access would probably have a hard time justifying showing a computer assembly for 14 hours of airtime. It wouldn't necessarily have to be sequential, of course, but, you know, you know what I'm saying, though. It's like, it's a, it's a wonderful age we live in. I'm trying to only blow the air up, because I don't want to blow it down and risk a uh, deforming what I think is a very delicate semi-transparent shipping label that I put on the surface of this thing. And I just realized I was just putting that right next to the microphone, so that was probably incredibly loud to you. My apologies about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so every medium has shit on it. I mean, hell, in his time, Shakespeare was considered by many to be absolute lowbrow shit. Like, look it up. I'm serious. Like, Shakespeare was not well regarded in his time. By everyone. I mean, like, obviously, some people regarded him highly. I mean, his plays still, I guess, sold out. I mean, no one really kept track of ticket sales back then. At least not, I don't think that survived to the modern day. But you know what I mean. Like, it, it was, he was very popular. It's just a lot of contemporary critics thought it was thought his plays were utter trash garbage you know but uh, it's more maybe more about times and tastes changing than anything else but uh, now the thing is I don't want to cut these leads too short because I'm using these Wago connectors 
and they're kind of going to float around in here. So I don't want to have the, not that these are that heavy, but I don't have the weight of the Wayo connector hanging off the wires. I'd rather have the Wayo connector sitting at the bottom of the box. So I want to make sure I at least leave them long enough where these can comfortably just sort of rest on the bottom of the box, which that should be more than enough though. And I'm going to start using proper strippers with these. That because this insulation is kind of tricky. Okay, so now this will be the initial live input from the source from the previous box downstream. Downstream? Yeah, downstream. And the only reason that I have to tap this, these out right here is for the LED. Because otherwise I would just run the line in directly to the circuit breaker and then to the switch in series rather than having to break out an extra couple of wires. But whatever. This whole thing's more complicated than it ever had to be. So now we can go from the Wago connector that will have the line input coming in to the circuit breaker and then to the switch. And for that, I will use 14 gauge wire. Um, offhand, I don't know what gauge I was using before. It's not labeled. It's like cheap panel wiring. Uh, but this is 14 gauge single conductor stranded. And I'm afraid uh, if you're not in the States, you're going to have to look up what 14 gauge equates to in square millimeters. Because I'm afraid offhand, I do not know. But. I will tell you this, it has an ampacity rating of 15. At least for building wiring. For panel wiring, it would be higher. And this would be considered panel wiring, I suppose, but you know, why cheap out? So I'm just stripping this, and one end of this little piece of jumper wire is going to go into the Wago terminal, the Wago connector, whatever it's called. And the other is going into this crimp connector. And I have my crimper somewhere. It is right here. And these crimpers are made for the insulated style crimps, insulated style connectors. And if I had it positioned correctly, that would be a huge help. And there we go. And that should theoretically give a nice strong connection. Which it did not. What in the fuck? What an asshole. Okay, granted these crimp these uh crimpers are pretty new, but I have used them a few times already, and they definitely passed the pull test. Well, if at first you don't succeed, crimp, crimp again. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, cool. So, there we go, that goes to the circuit breaker. Then from the circuit breaker to the switch. Now the switch is not labeled, but I'm going to assume it's got two like um, aluminum colored contacts and one brass colored contact. I'm assuming the brass contact is for the common, for, for the neutral, uh, for the LED, or uh, fucking lamp, neon lamp. I'm pretty sure it's not an LED in there because I doubt, doubt they could fit a resistor large enough. Um, in there. What am I doing? Ah, just, uh, continuity. Let's see, the switch is off, so theoretically I should get no continuity between those, or those, or that. Turn the switch on, and should have continuity between those. Uh, my probes were hitting it. There we go. And then, 
none there there good that is correct so then I should have some manner of resistance I'm assuming between the middle pin and this pin or not oh well neon indicator would have yeah at uh, whatever voltage this is putting out to test it would have almost no continuity whatsoever it would have almost infinite resistance so I'm just going to kind of trust that my assumption there is correct. And I guess, um, yeah, I'll make a, should I make up a jumper or should I just solder that? I'm going to make up a jumper. Like I said, I want this to be reconfigurable if I eventually do decide to reconfigure it. Can always get more connectors. It's going to be pretty short. Actually, will this... You know what, I don't want to risk losing strands, so I'm just going to use the proper wire strips. I'm just kind of talking to myself there, sorry. And I just did all that at a shot. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. That's the one thing I don't like about crimp connectors. They're kind of like hit or miss. I mean, you get what looks and feels like a great crimp when it's going in, and then it turns out it did not grip the wire that well, and it's all fucked up. So usually I like solderable connectors or just soldering wires as one would expect, but, uh... Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Oh my god, sorry, that was loud probably for you. Let's just push through the back of this. I think this enclosure is technically a little too thick. I think this switch is probably intended for, like, mounting in a metal panel. Because it's got a good grip, but obviously not a great grip, because I was able to push it through. But, whatever, we shall prevail. Wonderful, then... Oh, I'm actually need a quad way go because... I need to run a neutral wire for that. Do I just want to be a complete dump truck and just double up wires inside of that way go terminal? Yes, I do. I am going to do that. Even though it's... not recommended by anyone. Uh, it would help if I brought my snips to snip wire off that thing. I feel like I haven't gotten nearly as far enough as I should have by now. But I do have to wrap this up at some point. Because it is a work night. And even though I'm working from home because of virus times, I still got to wake up at like 8.55, call it, for 9 o'clock work. Uh, what am I doing? That goes in the Wago. Man, this insulation is so gummy. I wonder what uh, formulation it is, like what material it is. I don't wonder enough to go look right now, but... Just something I'm going to think about in my spare time. Anyways, um, this is going to need a smaller connector, though, because it is a much thinner wire gauge, which is actually good. It'll save me some blue conne blue connectors. And if I could get in there, this one will be red. Oh, uh, that's the longer one. Uh, yeah. No. Sorry, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Because if I'm putting the Wago connector with that other one, I should have left the strands open so I could interleave the strands of the two wires. Right? Right.
Oh yeah. Cool. Oh my god, I keep pushing the switch through. Okay, right, so these are getting twisted together. Nicely interleaved and the same length on the end. Again, not recommended, I suppose. But the reason I feel okay, it doesn't have any indicator of how far it's in. The only reason I'm okay doing that is, well, because this is not a permanent installation, but also this is going to be running a um, neon indicator lamp and an LED. So very, very low current unless something goes horrendously wrong. So I'm not too worried about that connection being a little on the shittier side. Again, it's all judgment calls when it comes to stuff like that. Oh my crap, I'm actually, wow. No, I'm going to need a huge neutral block because I still got to power these two devices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so neutral's going to have to go there, 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 there. And then also to there. And that's it because I'm just going to jump from there to there. Oh, then also for the LEDs. Yeah, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So fortunately I got a fiver. Yeah, I need way more connections than this. Okay. This is why I got these giant five bangers out before. Okay. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. Jesus. Yeah, I gotta go to bed, because I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing. The whole point of this being in this three-banger is because this is all pre-switch. Yeah, but the neutral's not switched. What the fuck are you talking about? At no point is the neutral switched. The neutrals are all bonded together. Get it together, Scott. Wow. Only the live needs to be tapped separately. Oy vey. Okay. Right. I mean, this is also what I get for not really planning this. I mean, I made the... As far as I got planning this, was making this diagram for the top of it. So, this is kind of a work in progress. And also out of shot. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to bed. How long has it been? I mean, it's been almost two hours. I figure about two hours is a good time for a live stream that no one watched. Yeah. Alright, well, I feel like I got a decent amount done, but not as much as I would have hoped or liked to have gotten done, necessarily. But hey, here we are. The gasket on this voltmeter is way bigger than the gasket on the ammeter, so it's like sticking out around the edge. It's kind of a bummer, but... NBD, I guess. And ultimately, I think um, the ammeter is going to measure... It's like tape with a whole bunch of shit stuck to it. Wow, that was accidental. Um, the ammeter, I think, is going to measure the... Should I measure the complete amperage going into this box with this ammeter? I mean, these two, because of the lack of accuracy or precision, these are two are just kind of for fun. Um, just to get a general idea of whether there's a load on it and whether it's honestly plugged in or not. Um, just to get a general idea of where the voltage is, because it can fluctuate a fair amount. Um, hmm. That doesn't. That, I'll make that decision tomorrow, on the fly. Just so I'm not resting this on the switches. Let me just put this on top of its case with the wires hanging out the sides. Ah, good. Okay. Well, this has been a mess, and well, it was fun for me. I don't think anyone watched it live. 
Well, if you did, though, I appreciate it. Uh, and if you watch and record it, I appreciate it, too. I will be back for part three in probably two days. Two days? Not today, but two days from now. Thursday. What day is it? Well, it's technically Wednesday, so technically Friday morning, I guess, New York time. 48 hours, no, because it took two hours. 46 hours from now, hopefully we'll be back. But we'll see. I can't promise anything. Um, this is me signing off. <laughs> And the stream on YouTube and and the stream on Twitch.